talk a little bit about tight line systems, something that we're going to do a little bit with this next video segment. And the idea with the tight line system, unlike suspension devices like the New Zealand wool that we used last week where the wool is holding the flies at a fixed point, what we're doing is we're casting a leader. It might be a traditional tapered leader and then off somewhere in the middle of that leader, we might have a colored piece of monofilament that we call a cider, which is our visible strike indicator. And off that cider, we have a short section, maybe three, four, five feet, depending on the depth of the water, of level tippet to a fly. And what we're going to do is instead of with a suspension device where you're just laying the indicator on the water and the indicator basically fishes the flies out at a particular depth, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be in the driver's seat. So when we cast, what we're going to be doing is making the cast, and as soon as those flies land the water, we're going to move the rod tip, maintaining some degree of tension. One of the keys with tight line nymphing is often you don't want too much tension. This is the biggest mistake a lot of us make, including myself, where you're going to cast and immediately move the rod tip downstream. A lot in this video, the short video that you're going to hear me referencing is a term going vertical. And what I mean by that is when you cast, what we're trying to do is we're trying to allow these weighted flies to drop naturally. If you put a weighted fly, even though a, a heavily weighted fly like this has a good bit of weight, if you cast and that rod tip is downstream, if I'm casting upstream and the drift is going down, and you see your rod tip downstream and you see your cider at a very shallow angle, so rod tip's downstream, and that cider is angled way upstream, you're putting a high degree of tension on that fly, and you're not allowing that fly to free fall. When you're fishing shallow sections of water, you can cast, you can immediately engage. That's perfectly fine. But when you're fishing drop-offs, deeper pools where you want your flies to drop and you don't want to have to use too much weight, what we can do is we can cast, we can pause as the flies are drifting and just literally elevate the rod tip, allow that cider to go vertical. And what you're doing is you're decreasing the tension, allowing the flies to drop naturally. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast up, allow the flies to settle, and then as soon as we have a drop off, we're just going to pause, allow that cider to go vertical. Sometimes we have to elevate, sometimes we have to elevate and leave, but the whole idea is that we're trying to get the cider directly underneath the rod tip, straight up and down, that decreases the tension, and what we can do is we're going to close line, we're basically hanging the flies, that cider underneath the rod tip, and we're just going to lead it to the drift. It's a short range presentation, but this approach this decreased tension gives your flies a much more natural drift and then also it allows you to use far less weight than what you're used to using just because you have relaxed the amount of tension on that rig and you're allowing these lightly weighted flies, very thin profile flies like your Pertagon that we tied in class to basically plummet quickly down the bottom and then all we're doing is re-engaging and lead them through the drift. So in the presentation you're going to hear me going, talk about going vertical and that's all we're talking about and having that center go straight up and down so we can lead those flies deeper in the water column with a natural drift. So the rig we're using here today, fairly simple. We have our Euro line, four foot section of leader material coming off the Euro line down to my cider, which is about 20 inches of SA OX cider material. And off of that, I did like a quadruple surgeons, not attaching the OX directly to the 5X. About three feet down, I have my first fly, which is that soft tackle that we tied, that brass bead soft tackle designed to fish higher in the water column. And on my point fly is this case caddis with a tungsten bead. The tungsten bead's gonna keep things nice and tight. The, high, the lighter weight fly is gonna ride a little higher in the water column. You know, often I'm fishing one fly. The only time these days where I'm fishing two flies, especially when you have the heavier fly on the point, which kind of keeps a steeper angle. Anytime you add a second fly, and it's going to be a lighter weight fly on that dropper, that fly is going to ride higher in the water column. And the only time I want to fish a second fly is when those fish are actually feeding higher in the water column. If they're not engaged, if they're not active, doing a second fly up there is going to do nothing other than just doubling the chances that I'm going to get tangled. So usually one fly, but when fish start showing signs of activity, feeding at multiple levels, I'm also going to fish multiple levels with my rig. Working this soft little slack water on the far side there. Keeping as much line leader off the water as possible. We're trying to go as vertical. We have a deep trough on the far side. The other thing with this approach, the tight line approach, it allows you to really swing your patterns out at the very end, as an example right here. So one of the things you'll notice is with this, you can do two gears, basically. You can dead drift casting up and drifting your flies down the water column. But right now what you're seeing are some granums, cicadas, the hatches, 
this time of the year in central PA, there are a lot of fish that are taking the emergent insects. So one of the things you can do in case in point, this took the top dropper, meaning that the flies are feeding higher in the water column. But with this approach, you can not only dead drift, but also at the very end, you can put the flies under tension and allowing the flies to swing upright. So that's one of the key points is that when you are fishing this time of the year, don't just focus on the dead drift or drifting downstream, but also focus a lot on the swung presentation at the very end. Sweet little setup here. Have these rocks that are sunlit, but just that soft little edge right between the two. We're close, we can fish vertical right underneath the rod tip. Good fish. Faster currents, just try to keep a slight bend. Don't put too much power on this fish. And people are asking me, people ask me a lot, why aren't you using a net? With a fairly smaller fish like this, I feel I can do just as quick of a job bringing the fish to the hand and releasing it rather than putting it in the net than having to take it out of the net. So typically with smaller fish, I'm just gonna play them by hand, bring them in by hand. There you go, folks, thank you. But with larger fish that require a lot more handling, a little bit more work, then I will definitely use a net in those situations. Here, pop. And just swing them out right there, and there we are. Fish on the swung. Presentation. Tight, tight, tight. Here, in the front. Got deep water, deep tuck. Trying to get as vertical as we can as possible. Fish took that one on the drop. When you're doing these techniques, these fish will take on the drop. Again, we're gonna keep working on this, just high rod tip stops. Those nips come in very quickly. Watching that cider for any hesitation. We're vertical here, good drift. Now just slowly swing things out. That's also gonna, once I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing them into proper placement. Just reposition the rod, keeping the rod to cock back. Don't need to make a false cast. Good drift, good drift. Again, just swing out. Just let those flies swing all the way out. And wherever you want your flies to go into forward stroke, you're basically pulling through a straight arc. So just reposition the rod, flies are hung back, down low, hand in front, make your casting stroke. It's a nice way to reduce tangles, just using the tension of that line to help load the rod. Okay, gonna get up here. Drop around right this inside. Tuck. Flies drop. Doing control. And there we are. Good fish. Remembering from last week, we don't want to put too much tension on these fish. Just enough. It's a nice brown. We're going to keep working on this. Just short compact strokes fire it in there drift 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 slowly swing this out we're gonna go back to that one I missed a few moments ago right along the bank and I missed it again
not this time. Okay, that's the side here. Bring it in. Nice brown. Longer cast. These fish right now are on the hunting mode. This little drop that we're making these casts, catching these fish, normally I will catch a few fish, but not that many. Right now, these insects, as they're hatching, it is causing a feeding frenzy, and the, in, and the fish know exactly where to go. And they're gonna go right here on top, right on the top of this run. This is where the insects are active. This is where the food is. This is where we need to be. Distance, distance, distance. We're just gonna float the cider in this situation, creating as much distance as we can from us to the fish. An absolutely beautiful Monday morning after Thanksgiving. We've got some really warm temps, high moisture content, some sun, and a bunch of wind as this new weather system that's coming in. But a few caddis are still moving around. And one of the things you need to think about with caddis is this: is even though I'm seeing a good number of caddis still flying in the air, it doesn't necessarily mean that the caddis are hatching. Caddis, as we had talked about in class, can live you know, two, up to two, three weeks after they emerge along stream bank vegetation. So just because you see caddis flying around the water doesn't mean that they're hatching. It could necessarily just mean that they're just moving or just flying. So don't always mistake caddis for insects that have just recently hatched. The tying this thing up, just go to a tight line system. We have a nice drop right here. Goes from shallow to deep. So as I'm making this presentation, and so we're gonna swing this out. Goes from shallow to deeper. We're gonna lead the flies a little earlier. Kinda keep a shallow angle. As soon as we go into that drop, we're gonna go vertical, drop those flies deep, get down right along the bottom, and then we can swing the stuff out at the very end. But this just allows you to switch gears. Short, compact casting strokes. Trying to go as vertical as quickly as we can. Really deep water here. This is what we call a prime lie. It's got the best of all worlds. It's got depth, it's got protection from predators. On also, it's got good bit of food source. Elevate, elevate, elevate. This is a really deep slot. We're gonna really try to go deep. Cider's about six inches off the water. There we are. This is where buying time with that tight line system, just being able to go into that vertical position, it's absolutely key. Nice brown. Just a gorgeous brown trout. But in these primary spots, I'm gonna spend a lot more time just really dissecting this water. Going vertical, miss a fish. The other thing to remember is I'm fishing a pretty lightly weighted fly. So with these strikes, very often, as, I, as you see there, you're not going to feel the strike because there's just not a high degree of tension. We're just swimming these flies, drifting them naturally. And because of how light this system is, you're gonna be seeing the strike more likely than you are actually feeling the strike. I'm gonna work this little slot, little bow and arrow cast. Stone fly, just drifting, drifting, drifting. Just work this inside here. This little soft seam here, reach. The evangel of longer rod and just kinda of hold it right over that current. Little edge, there we go. Nice brown. Nice fish. Took the stonefly. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so we already have our point fly on here. Dropper broke off, so I'm just gonna grab a section of 6X tippet. Just find wherever up on my tippet I want, maybe about 20 inches above my 
point fly, which is a case cast, and just make a very large overhand. Surgeons, once, twice, and three times. Just kind of wiggle it through. We got our dropper right there, so we're just doing a surgeon's knot to add our dropper. Seal the knot. And our dropper in here, this is gonna be a larger deep purple print. Now work the soft side. It's such a great little section of water. And again, the whole European nymphing approach you could do, especially with this wind, this wind is starting to really pick up. With this wind picking up, definitely wouldn't be a bad idea to go to an indicator rig, kind of keeping the rod tip down low, but I still think I can have enough control here. The wind's not too bad. So just kind of a short couple of strokes here. Short, powerful cast, not so much there. Laying that sider on the water at first, going vertical. We're gonna swing these flies out. A little bit more line here. Short strokes, lay it up. Just laying that slider on the water, reaching over these faster currents. Laying that slider drop deeper, deeper, deeper. Going vertical here. Again, such a great spot to swing these things out at the very end. Keep working. Short cast. Just laying that tip of that slider on the water. This is deep water. I want that slider laying on the water and going vertical, but maybe just a few inches of my first sighter on the water. Going inside, tuck, keep in line off the water this time, going vertical as quickly as I can. Now you can see how quickly those flies drop. Short stroke. The wind is really starting to get crazy now here. Going vertical. So anytime I'm trying to get my flies down deeper, I'm gonna immediately try to keep my slider off the water. The less line on the water, the quicker my flies drop due to decreased surface tension. Okay, great spot. This is one of my favorite little spots here. Laying the slider on the water, creating that anchor. With the wind coming up, I'm gonna use more of the line hand to control the drift. A little more inside towards me. Go vertical here, drift. There we are, decent fish. And that was a time where that fish definitely hit it hard enough where I felt that one. But it ate the dropper. Usually when you have a dropper eater, fish that hits that top fly, often those takes are gonna be a little more aggressive. Nice little brown, gorgeous brown. Good sized fish here. These fish, these last couple of years, we've had very mild winters. As a result, the fish have grown to some pretty good sizes. Not an ideal situation, but we have a little current seam coming off the logs over there. And there's a couple fish that are rising. This is a Euro line with a Euro leader, about four feet of 15 pound test maxima, two feet of cider in my tippet. But what I'm gonna do is just put on a dry fly and see if I can make this work. Again, remembering anytime I think there's an opportunity for me to catch fish on dry flies, I'm often gonna be using some sort of European nymphing line, a line that has mass that allows me to actually cast. As much as I like the mono rigs, they're incredibly useful when you're nymphing, but 
basically useless when you're trying to actually cast drive flies at longer ranges. So we're just going to take off our nymphs and attach a little CDC and elk caddis pattern. Pre-treat this real quick. Put a little floating on there. This is good. You're starting to see some fish rise. Gonna use some fly dip here, real quick. Okay, again, not an ideal situation, but we just took our European nymphing rig, still attached to our line and rod, and just took off the nymphs. So I have my Euro line, four feet of 15 pound test maxima. Cider material, which is greased, hopefully keeping that cider off or high in the water column. And then about three and a half, four feet to our 5X tippet with our dry fly, which was attached to a nymph at one point. Okay, get off enough line right here. All we're gonna do here, just make a short little stroke. Short cast, getting slightly up in the cross. Hopefully some of the fish, yep, just like that. You see these fish rise and they come up, you're seeing boil, uh, bubbles on the water. So when I see bubbles on the water, that's usually a pretty good indication that they are indeed taking dry flies on the surface rather than emerge right below the surface. Gotta work in my dry fly game here. Shorter cast, right on the front side of that rock. Drift, drift, there we go. Hopefully we didn't spook the rest of these fish, but what the downstream approach offers you, it offers you an opportunity to present the fly first to the fish. And then you can feed the slack down into it. But in slow flats like this, where fish can be a little more discriminate, about your presentation, it just gives you a better opportunity to present the flies. Yeah. 